yo what's going on guys all right so in the last video we looked a little bit at um at uh, the functionality of spring security so as you saw by just adding that dependency spring spring security will um will implement its security mechanism and then what happens is that um, that happens by default and so what happens is that um if we don't do anything to modify the um, behavior of Spring Security, then um, what happens is that the main security mechanism starts to kick in. So what we then need to do is that within this project, we're going to need to then um, add our configuration class to at least uh, modify the behavior of Spring Security. So now the first thing I need to show you is that um, in the original project, now this is the method that we are going to be building within this one but then the problem here is that th this is a project that I built a while ago so the main thing here is that uh, because of the version of Spring Boot that we are running uh, this was the way of uh, implementing or at least um, modifying the behavior of Spring Security so this is how you would write your request matches so that um, the particular routes that you don't want to um, or the particular routes that you want to access without authenticating this is what you would have to do now the change is not that big it is only slightly major it's not sorry it's um it's only a slight um change in the way we implement this particular method and so i'm gonna go with the latest way of implementing this security filter chain method um like i said the change is not that big but it is um it is there and so um, this is the project that you guys will see when um, downloading it from the github repository and then uh, but then the one that we are going to work on which is this one uh, we are currently running spring boot 3.1.4 uh, the original project was running spring boot version let me just show you now this was 3.0.6 so um with that being said i think we can continue now with uh building our project i mean sorry um modifying the spring 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 security behavior just slightly all right so the first thing i want to do is i want to come into the index controller here and then i want to add a home method so i want to say public um string So this is going to be a get mapping and then within here I'm just going to say return string sorry man uh, let me just say home page all right so these are the two routes that we are gonna be looking to access uh, without authenticating so I think also within here we can create two methods that we can only uh, access so long as we are um, so basically these are the two routes that I'm going to create so that these ones we only access them once we are authenticated so I'm just going to do this public so this one I'll say get um, admin Um, I'll just say add get mapping this one I'm just gonna uh, prefix it with um, admin right or rather no I'll say app and then the route is gonna be admin right I'm gonna create another one just so that you see uh, this one I'll just say dashboard Alright, 
so these two routes these are the two routes where we can only access them so long as we are authorized otherwise if we're not authorized we're not going to access them now these two are going to be the two particular routes that we are basically are going to set so that we can access them without authenticating so now with these routes being put in place the other thing that we need to do is then we're going to need to come within our package here or our project and then we're going to create a package so i'm going to call this uh config right and then in here i'll create another package i'm just going to say security okay and then within here we're going to create our class so i'm just going to name it security config okay so now we're going to say at configuration and then we're going to say at enable web security and so in here we're going to create our security filter chain uh, method just want to add a comment here so now understand one thing in this method we're not only going to just create that security filter chain method there's going to be other methods that we're going to use or that we are going to put in here that are going to be security related even our when we create our custom um, classes for authentication um, within the database well where we authenticate the user with whatever is stored within the database so but that's for a later video for now let's just focus on the security filter chain class so And then we're gonna just say security filter chain and that's pretty much it all right so now we need an input here which is going to be HTTP um, security then we can just name it is HTTP security all right so now this method or this object over here is basically um, the object that we need to s use to set uh, our configuration so the first thing we need to do is say http security and then we're going to say authorized http request so now the difference between how we're going to set this up is that um with the with like for example what i showed you within the original project which is this one so as you can see here we're just chaining a bunch of methods together and then basically um return the http security dot build at the end of the method so now the slight change here is that we're going to need to use lambda expressions to do this so let's start with this one so i'm going to say um auth and then here we're gonna say auth right and then that's when we change the methods that we need so we're gonna say add any request sorry it's request matches and then within here we're gonna add the request or the 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 the, the routes that we created here so like for example this one and test right so I'm just gonna s explicitly say that this one which is for the home and then the next one is gonna be test now and then from here we're gonna say dot permit is that correct no sorry it's gonna be here permit all and then from here we're gonna say any request authorized right oh yeah and we need to chain if i'm not mistaken or rather before we chain that let me just show you what needs to happen after here oh well, yeah we need to add and this is gonna throw an exception so we need to add it to the method signature so let's do that quickly right so then here at the end we just say return um, HTTP request or oh, sorry security and then dot build all right
right so now as you can see these are the and these are the basically the URIs that we are going to access without um, authenticating and this is basically what we're doing here we're just telling spring security that listen anyone who tries to access these two routes they need to uh, they need to be permitted they don't need to be authorized so now any other request that comes after that the user is going to be authenticated which is going to be or well, the users need gonna is going to need to be authenticated which is going to be these two particular routes so now another thing I want to point out if I were to do something like this uh, so basically what this is going to do is that spring security is going to see that okay anything that comes after this particular forward slash you can permit everyone you need to be careful of how you set this up otherwise you can uh, basically just break your or rather just create a security breach something like that so that's one of the reasons why I actually added this path right uh, what you call it I prefixed this app uh, URI before the other actual routes or the, the route name if I should say it like that alright so I'm gonna leave this as it is for now then I'm gonna run the application because there's something else that I want you to see so uh, let's say um, Spring Boot and then let's just run the application okay so our application is running so let's just open the browser Okay, so our application is running on port number, where is it, 8007. So I'm just going to come here, I'm going to say localhost. And then just press enter. Okay. For some odd reason, this wants to authenticate so let me just check something what did I do wrong here oh okay I forgot to annotate this as a bean so I need to stop the server and then just make sure you annotate this method as a bean okay gonna run it again so as you can as you as you saw just like in the last episode the moment you don't properly configure the uh, the spring security um, filter chain already um, you got to be authenticated whenever you want to access any particular route so um, there's another there's another example over there so I'm just gonna click run again and wait for the application to uh, to start up Okay, so let's try again. All right, as you can see, that's our home page over there. All right, let's see if we can access the test route. So as you can see, we can access the test route without authenticating. So now let's try app slash admin. So now as you can see, um, it's telling us that access is denied um, access to localhost was denied now it's supposed to give us a um, a login form and currently it's not doing that so again that all depends on how you configure your uh, spring security filter chain method over here so now I'm gonna stop the server so now I'm gonna chain another method here then I'm gonna say dot um, HTTP basic, and then we gotta say cust. Then we gotta add this in order for the application to show the form. So now I'm gonna run the application again. So remember to always put this um, right after the right after this particular method. So be careful of the parentheses there because that can also be confusing so I'm just gonna run it again okay 
so now I'm gonna try again and access this route and let's see if it's gonna give us the login form so I'm just gonna press enter as as you can see now it's giving us this login form to log in so remember what you need to do here is supply the username so user is the default name or the default user account that you need to use to access the um, the app and then the password as you know we get it here so I'm gonna copy that then I'm gonna paste it here and then sign in so now we get the admin page let's go to the dashboard and see if we can access that you see we can access the dashboard page so now uh, if we go back to home we can access that and then um, test as you can see we can access the test and then again app.admin we can access that now please don't misunderstand this isn't using um, a session based type of um, I think it is actually I'm not uh, I could be lying I think it is actually in the background obviously when you run all Java applications whether it's running a um, Java servlets or whether you're running JSPs whatever it does create a session whenever you write uh, whenever you start an application so if I came here to inspect this code application it's going to store it's gonna start with um, uh, what you call it it's gonna give you a session a J session ID but the username and password that we entered there it didn't create a session for that it's just basically um, uh, spring security um, holding this within a thread of some sort but again that's another topic for another day so for now um, we're not going to be working with sessions we will be disabling that at a, at a future stage but for now I just wanted to show you that you can modify the behavior of spring security and um, the way you need to do that go about doing that is this so now this is not the end of it there are other methods that we are going to need to chain like I said if you look in the uh, original project um, this is how we did it before but as you can see right after the any request authenticated there's other things that we need to implement as well um, we will be looking at how to implement um, the JWT token as well um, because we need to add that filter over here as well so we will get to see that but I wanted to show you within this project um, how to set up spring security and then like I said this will be the original project that's gonna be on github but um, this is not how we're gonna be doing it in the current project that we're working on which is this so um, I think it would be good to have both just to see how the how we used to do it or how it used to be done um, in the uh, before the latest update and then this is the way we're gonna go about doing it within the current new release or the latest release of spring security or in spring boot um, I think um, I can end the video here um, because I think that I should create a separate video for um, all the other components that we're gonna be working with I think most likely within the next video we're gonna be working on the JWT token filter uh, which is uh, basically this particular class over here and uh, no I'm lying I'm lying I'm lying um, let me just show you uh, services I think and then oh yeah so we need to create this class over here and then basically what we're going to be doing is basically creating this class to handle our JW, JWT token where it's going to create it that's the first thing secondly um, this is the same class where, where we create methods where we're going to validate the token and then obviously once the user has been logged in they will authenticate and then from there or after authenticating they will um, uh, they will basically um, uh, what you call it get a token in return and then they will use that to do all the other crud applications or sorry crud operations and stuff but I'm not too sure but I think this is the probably what we will be looking at within the next video otherwise we will be looking at how to create our custom user details for logging in I'll probably decide that after this particular video but yeah there's no real order in here but we will see in any case, I think I should stop it there. Um, and then, um, yeah, 
I think that's it for the video. Um, again, I'm not decided yet. I haven't decided yet on what we're going to be building next, but I think it will most likely be the uh, JWT token class that we need to, um, or token service that we need to create um, for us to be able to generate JWT tokens. All right, guys, so that's it for the video. And then, again, if you've liked what you've seen so far, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will be seeing you guys within the next video. All right, cheers for now.